eager to get started. Uh, right now, I count about eight people on. Uh, so we have a nice small group. We can really think a little bit in depth about this. Uh, so I think what I'm going to suggest is that we have a very, very brief, you know, 20 second maximum um, introduction of everybody who's on the call. Please just say your name, your institution, um, and um, if you are uh, by your kind of training and, and practice uh, uh, agronomist or a economist or a climate scientist or however you might describe yourself. So I'll start. I'm Alex Ruane. I'm at the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies in New York. Uh, I'm a climate scientist by training and I'm the science coordinator for AGNEP. Um, I see that Trin has just joined. Uh, Dr. Trin, could you please just give a very brief introduction of your name and institution and just core subject of expertise, please? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Maivan Tri, I'm Director of the uh, Institute for Agricultural Environment in Vietnam. Vietnam. Um, my background is uh, soil science and um, environmental analysis and modeling. Uh, I'm working um, now mostly for climate change, uh, GD inventory, and uh, development of um, adaptation and mitigation for agriculture. Um, I'm team leader for NDC Agriculture in Vietnam now. All right. Thank you. We're just doing very fast. I'm going to go down the list as I see it. Uh, we have Felix, who's hosting on the on the uh, audiovisual side, so I'll let I'll let him pass. Um, but let's go, Chiang Jiang, please. Are you there? If so, you're still muted. So Chang Zhang, if you can uh, unmute and just give a very quick introduction. All right, that uh, mute button hasn't turned off yet. So Jess, over to you, please. Hi, I'm Jess, and I'm a graduate student of Columbia. My major is climate and society, and um, I'm the note taker of this session. So um, it's really glad to meet you guys. All right, thank you, Jess. Uh, Claire, over to you, please. All right, I don't see the microphone changing. So Claire, if you're there, please unmute and, and give a quick introduction. And if that's not happening yet, let's go to Catherine, please. Catherine, I saw you momentarily, but I didn't personally hear anything. So maybe you could, could you try again and speak close to the microphone? All right, I see you unmuting, but I still can't hear it. Maybe it's just me. Somebody can correct me if, if uh, they are hearing. Uh, but in the meantime, let's go to Kayla. Hey, I'm Kayla from the University of North Dakota, and I worked with Alex this summer um, on climate impact stuff. Thank you. Uh, Shabnam, could you please say hello? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Shabnam. I'm a PhD student from Iran, uh, and my institute is Gorgan University of Agriculture Sciences and Natural Resources. Thank you. Um, all right. So. Uh, we didn't hear yet from Chang Zhang, um, but uh, please, if, if you uh, are able to connect, we can we can go with that. Um, yeah, so we have about 25 minutes, um, and our, our task is to answer the questions that Sonali just showed. Um, I want to turn the floor over to Trin in, in a moment here to get us started since he's much more familiar with the, the current context. Uh, but just to remind everybody, we're, we're trying to get some progress on what specific mitigation and adaptation co-benefits projects we might do in Southeast Asia. Um, I think we can start by looking at Vietnam, although of course we're interested in the, in the broader region. 
And really what we want to do is we want to shift from broad discussion to specifics. Uh, so what is the key focus? Who are the potential collaborating partners? Uh, what might we look for from organizational support? And then what type of modeling framework and uh, capabilities would we need? Uh, and on this topic, I'll just say one more word, which is that we are building up um, our organizational network that could be the beginnings of AGMIP Vietnam uh, with a, uh, a multi-institutional kind of hub that would uh, help coordinate work within the country, but also potentially connect to a broader Southeast Asia AGMIP uh, to bring in Laos and Cambodia and Thailand and others who uh, are also interested from this region. So Trin, maybe I'll, I'll hand the floor to you to uh, get us started and, and maybe kick off some initial ideas, please. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, I uh, have uh, one presentation uh, for the last section and I can share here uh, for you to but not all, not uh, all of the my. That would be great if you could share the screen. That I remember you had one slide, which was your your graph number three, there, which really shows the uh, the types of things that we could model and and what is needed there. So I would suggest that as a starting point. This one. Yes. Okay. Um... For example, in uh, Vietnam, we already uh, developed um, NDC and uh, NAP. So we have some uh, options for mitigation and also we have also mitigation and adaptation and analysis and for the milestone into 2030. Um, I just pick up some main uh, mitigation measure uh, and then we already have some analysis of um, the co-benefit of uh, adapted mitigation adaptation and, and um, social and economic benefit. For example here uh, one of the one of the very main um, mitigation uh, high potential mitigation measure is uh, to apply uh, all the alternative wet and drying irrigation for rice um, and the second one is uh, mid-season drainage is this one is this technology already have uh, in um, the list of IPCC 2016 um, and alternative is like uh, also already have like a multiple uh, multiple um, irrigation uh, alternative uh, for also IPCC um, in Mekong Renta, Mekong River Renta, we have um, a lot of um, soil intrusion and uh, uh, sea level rise. Um, so a lot of land is the um, uh, sunlight and uh, uh, lack of fresh water. Um, it means that also more um, uh, saline water. Uh, so they introduced a new system of right stream uh, instead of right rice. Um, this system is bring much, uh, much more income for the farmer. Maybe they can have uh, 10 times of uh, income from free season compared to the one rice season. Um, it growing also very fast. I remember that in 2010, I visited there uh, each province have about 2,000 hectares, but now one province have, can have about 100,000 hectares. So in total, uh, the, rev, the, the Delta have already about near 200,000 hectares uh, of this um, land type. type. Um, so not only reducing of, uh, methane emission, but it's also bring back to uh, the farmer have a lot of uh, money for the uh, exporting uh, organic stream uh, product. Um, in the same time, they have uh, they they can have a very good adaptation for the soil intrusion and sanitization. Um, the labor efficiency also very high, and the income of the farmer is much higher than the, the old one. 
the important thing is they can use uh, effectively the natural uh, soil resource um, in this in these areas, so they can adapt for the climate change and sea level rise conditions. Um, somehow they can have a more, I think, more adaptation than mitigation because they, they, they get more money. It also the same time in the hilly land and mountainous area in uh, uh, in Vietnam, they uh, normally the spring season uh, they can drive, they can plant rice because they have some water from reservoir. But now, uh, now because uh, less water come in and reservoir only uh, drowns at the end of the um, at the middle of the dry season. So they decided to ship from uh, rice motor country to upland crop like uh, maize, like peanut, the soybean, and also uh, uh, fruit trees. So they they don't plant rice and no emission of um, methane. Um, by by doing this, they get uh, they can adapt with the drought and the sunlight and the soil nutrition conditions in the in the dry uh, season. They increase the value added for the um, land of tide um, and also it increase the income. And uh, the more important is they diversify the product and, and the market. Normally they have only, uh, only rice, so the market is all, only have only rice. But now they have uh, maize, they have uh, peanut, they have uh, soybean, they have uh, a lot of fruit trees. And you, you know that the fruit trees in Vietnam increasing rapidly. Um, three years ago, it's, it's very very low uh, exporting fruit tree, but now uh, they already got uh, about four million uh, four million US dollar for by exporting the fruit trees. So it's going very quickly. Um, for the livestock, um, they already have a, uh, we already have some uh, mitigation like uh, improving the cattle diet. You know, normally uh, cattle eat, eat um, the raw grass with uh, very low uh, energy and also very high CN ratio, let's say about uh, 70, 80. But now they uh, improve uh, in the nitrogen, nitrogen content in the food and also they mix some more uh, gradient to the food and, and the, the food is balancing with, between the carbon and nitrogen and so protein. So it um, directly reduce emission of methane uh, from uh, uh, enteric fragmentation but in the same time, they uh, get very high benefit from uh, increasing the meat and yield and, and milk yield. Um, so this one is uh, um, for the for the residues, crop residues. We have uh, in one year we have a total of about one, nearly one hundred million tons of uh, crop residues. In the past, um, it's about 70, no, uh, 10 years ago, 70% of the residues are open burning. Um, but now they, uh, we recommend it uh, to not burning the residues, but also use it for composting, for covering, and for munching, and incorporating um, to the soil. Um, so this one is not only uh, reducing methane emission compared to the green and, and manure, but also increasing crop green, uh, improving soil fertility, uh, mitigating pollution from burning, and also enhancing the tolerable of the soil uh, microbial. Um, we have about, uh, we have about nearly 1 million hectares, uh, no, about 640,000 hectares of coffee in the whole country is concentrating in the highland plateau. Um, the farmers have a behavior uh, pump a lot of water, let's say it's about 600 cubic meters per plant per year. 
And then we, the, the ministry article also already have a guideline to reduce it to 400 cubic meters per plant per year. It already reduced about 30% of the water. But we introducing uh, dripping irrigation combining with uh, liquid fertilizer for the, uh, for the coffee. And you know, we save, uh, we save about 30% of water we save about 40% of fertilizer. We save about 80% of labor and uh, no uh, runoff water, no nutrients in the runoff water and then uh, and no nutrients in the So we, this one is very high benefit, co-benefit compared to reducing of the um, N2O. And normally Great. for mitigation, we already use, for example, some uh, very familiar uh, model like uh, DNDC to simulate uh, methane and NTO emission from rice production, from uh, upland crop production, and um, from residues uh, crop. And we also use a DSAT for simulating uh, crop yield increase and uh, also some impact from uh, fertilizer impact from water. So we have a potential gene, we have a water limited gene, and we have a nutrient mit limited gene. And, and then, they, then we use this to, uh, uh, more, uh, to simulate uh, the impact um, uh, for the adaptation um, of uh, uh, these uh, parameters. For the livestock, we use a PC dairy, but um, I think it's not so, so very strong and uh, we still looking for uh, another one uh, more stronger and it can uh, simulate um, continuously uh, but not for the for the short uh, period we also uh, use an uh, exact uh, model from FAO uh, to uh, to simulate um, um, uh, the impact yeah the impact from learning change from applicable of uh, applications of uh, new technology compared to the to the uh, control one so we can have, uh, get the benefit and the adaptation impact and mitigation impact and um, we also use aqua crop to uh, evaluate the impact of uh, uh, slide and uh, soil intrusion irrigation uh, so uh, water irrigation to to rice, paddy rice, and also the upland crop on uh, soil quality. Um, that is that is the uh, normally we do that, but uh, we found that many parameters we still uh, have a little gap, uh, which uh, we don't have any uh, good model to uh, simulate. For example, uh, we don't have a model to simulate the fruit trees and prairie crop. Um, it's very, it, it has some, uh, in some, uh, in DSAT and DADC, but it's very few. And um, I don't find it's very accurate. Uh, <clears throat> it also some um, adaptation, uh, uh, adaptation uh, benefit uh, we we cannot uh, we cannot uh, quantify uh, for example um, for the alternative wetting and drying we don't we don't uh, uh, the, 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 the technology is just to uh, reducing the GG emission and save water and uh, but they have no impact on uh, on uh, crop yield uh, and how to quantify that one, and also the improving of um, how to quantify the improving extreme climate tolerable. That is also um, very hard. Um, it's some, so, some, yeah. Trey, I just want to interrupt because we have about ten minutes to go, um, which is a very short time. So let's. I, I think you have a, a fantastic set of ideas here. Uh, and it's clear that there is, is vast potential to do some demonstrations, not just of one, but of several different kind of MACB approaches. Uh, so maybe let's, let's focus the last 10 minutes on what would be the first and what are the, the capabilities that we could uh, emphasize as being the, the, the most important to add to do this correctly. 
I think the first thing that I see here is that the approach is very much a biophysical approach about chemical exchange and biology, um, but I don't see much yet on economics. So I'm curious, is there is there a system already in place that would allow us to do the trade-off um, or is this something that we would want to bring in Roberto? Um, I think you're already in conversation with him, but could we put this into an economic frame? Yeah, that is, that is my uh, serious uh, thinking yeah, when we uh, develop NDC and uh, we calculate the markup for the different mitigation measures. But uh, we don't have tool to to analyze the um, economic uh, benefit. No, and then we have to fight uh, some sheet, some Excel sheet, uh, mm -hmm. um, to to calculate the uh, marginal investment cost curve for each uh, each uh, mitigation measure. Um, but I found I found that it's not very systematically. Uh, yeah, and not uh, dynamic. Yeah, yeah. Recently, recently Iri uh, got a small project by uh, from UNEP uh, to develop um, CBA tune uh, for rice production in Vietnam, and um, they they ask they ask people they ask us to evaluate it and they want to have a training for the end user next time maybe next maybe end of this month. So. Okay, so let's write this down. As, you know, as we're taking notes here, um, let's let's uh, mention that there is a, a need for this economic frame and interest. Something like TOA uh, could be could be useful to use. Now, in looking at these here, um, my first instinct is to take the one that our models are best equipped to do. So I think um, let's let's pick some that are harder to do. For example, we do not have a good coffee model within AgMIP. There are a couple I can point you towards, but it's not the strength of, of the group that we currently have. Uh, so I would suggest that the, the drip irrigation for coffee maybe is not the first project that we explore. Um, not that there's anything uh, less interesting about that, but just from the modeling standpoint. Um, uh, maybe I'll give my impressions and you can correct me uh, where I have drifted. Um, I would say that the, the cattle diet, as you mentioned, is a challenge because we don't have a great livestock model. Um, there are some livestock models within AgMIP that we use, LiveSim um, being one and um, some others. I, I forget the, the titles off the top of my head. But I would say, again, that is one that is going to be more difficult because the models that I know are more about pasture greenhouse gases and uh, and dairy and meat production, not animal uh, greenhouse gas transfers. Uh, finally, the other one on here that looks challenging to me is the rice shrimp system. Um, I've done a lot of work in Bangladesh and I've seen how important that can be. Um, there are big challenges around salinity um, of the, the resulting rice rotation and neighboring farms that may not want to be uh, shrimp or may not want to have the, the salinity intrusion that sometimes shrimp fields can impose. Um, although maybe I'm incorrect on that if you have freshwater shrimp or something like that, I, I may just be completely wrong. But the challenge here is that we don't have a great aquaculture map or model. And I don't know, for example, what types of greenhouse gas exchanges happen within an aquaculture system. So I worry that we could say how much methane is reduced um, but it would be hard to know what the other side of that equation is in the new system. Um, so I guess what I've done here is I've just crossed off the, the cattle, the shrimp, and the coffee, uh, not because they're uninteresting or unimportant, but because they're a little bit more challenging as a first demonstration. The others all strike me as very practical and something that we could do very quickly, not quickly, but immediately we could start on. Um, the DSAT crop model with DNDC um, and maybe even APSIM if we have Australian colleagues uh, are all capable of these types of interactions. Um, the biggest challenge is probably the crop residue, um, but I think the models can all handle that. Certainly DNDC can. Um, and in that sense, um, the question I would have on those 
uh, would be where do we start? Which populations of farmers in which region? Um, so I have just put a bunch of things on the table. Maybe you would like to react uh, to the ones that I have suggested are, are higher immediate priorities. Uh, and then if, if you want to comment on the regions, that would be fantastic. Yeah, uh, mostly uh, this one is the, uh, those uh, mitigation is uh, on the list of the, we call, we, we divide it uh, by two group of one is uh, like a domestic uh, uh, mitigation and uh, the other one is uh, uh, international support mitigation. So this one is almost, uh, almost um, uh, top um, prioritized. And so the government uh, will mm -hmm. have a commitment to the UNFCCC in the future, maybe maybe next year. For which one? For all of them or just in general? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a, it is a, we need to move immediately, I think is what you're saying, yes. All right. Do you do you uh, of the ones that I just listed? So the wetting and drying, or the mid-season drainage, or the conversion to upland crops, or the reuse of crop residue. Is there a region or a set of farm experiments or population of farmers that you are currently interacting with that may be a first opportunity to demonstrate this? Um, for for alternative wetting and drying and mid-season drainage, is that is a, if the country scale? It, it everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Uh, converting rice to shrimp is just only located in Mekong River and there's uh, maybe four or five provinces in Mekong River and there only. Um, mm -hmm. Rice converting rice to upland crop is uh, mostly in the hilly and mountainous areas um, so it's in the upper part of, uh, of vietnam not uh, in the not in the in the flatland yeah uh, the improving cattle diet is is the mostly for the country scale yeah uh, yeah is the use of crop residues is also is a country scale because it's everywhere uh, dripping irrigation is just only in Highland Plateau. It's about uh, five provinces in, in the Highland Plateau for only. All right, that's certainly helpful. And maybe I will ask your, your advice on this. Um, I, I believe you've been in some of the conversations around the AGMEP Vietnam conversation uh, and how we might partner with Ang Jiang University and, and other places to build up uh, kind of a, a network of, of participants there. Um, is there a place where we can demonstrate, I know it's a, it's a national program, but can we demonstrate uh, maybe in a region that is, is uh, a place where you or, or those partners would work? And again, what I'm saying here, this is the AGMIP approach often, is we show that the protocol works in one location and then we expand to many. Um, so even if it's a national level program, perhaps we can think about a specific place, maybe where we have good field data or farmer surveys, or where there is a specific policy under consideration uh, on a provincial level maybe. Um, so we don't, you don't have to have the answer right now, but I would encourage you to think about the starting point before we get to the national level. Yeah, for mid-season drainage and alternative and wetting, we already have a um, deep study uh, pilot in uh, in Red River uh, We measure um, the different uh, drainage level, for example, minus five millimeter uh, centimeters, minus ten centimeters, and minus fifteen centimeters, and we measure. Um, methane emission from that one uh, and it's very significant significant uh, data about that but we didn't uh, uh, focus on collecting uh, as a expect for example social economic and also yeah yeah 
But it would make sense, for example, if we were to request funds to say, in, if we were to look in this region, we already have good biophysical and measurement data. Um, so let's collect the economic data around this region uh, because that we're at least one step of the way. Um, so I, I didn't hear exactly where was that pilot ongoing? In um, Taipei province, in Red River and that. Okay. So we um, also have, we also have uh, uh, some uh, measurement points in Anzang province in Mekong River and that. Okay. Great. Um, we already finished one. Um, no, actually, we already finished one project on uh, developing uh, emission factor for rice and seed uh, upland crop in the whole country. Hmm. Now, is that a trend? I mean, certainly Vietnam is famous for rice production, but is there a large increase of maize and soy and other crops? Is that an ongoing trend? Yeah, yeah. All right. And that would reduce CH4, the methane emissions. Um, and that final bullet point there about diversifying the market um, is, is exciting and important. Uh, something that we'd have to figure out, you know, uh, what the economic ramifications are of that. Um, so I think we're actually out of time here. Um, and I see Jess has just sent me a quick note about some slides that she has been making from the notes of this. So yes, Jess, please send that to myself and Trin if you can. And I think what we really need to do coming out of this is report back that in Vietnam, we are ready to do some demonstrations, that there has been a lot of measurement, consideration of, of all elements of MACB, including which models. The biggest need is the economic side um, in terms of establishing a modeling framework, uh, but that we have regions that we think would serve as good pilots, maybe even for a collaborative study that would demonstrate what we can do before it goes to the full national scale, uh, which should be very appealing. It also strikes me, if I can be so bold, as to say that Vietnam may be a good place to host one of these meetings because of your, uh, your expertise already and our interest in starting this AGMIP Vietnam hub for Southeast Asia, it could have a dual, dual purpose uh, if we can bring the conference uh, to your country. So um, I think with that, maybe we should head back to the main session. Trin, do you want to have any final comments here before we go back? That, okay. I'm All right. Great. So, Trin, when we go back, it would probably be best if you wanted to try to summarize uh, what we have discussed. I, of course, would be happy to, to help. Um, and Jess is sending some slides. Hopefully, will also help with that. Okay. Yeah, I'll you guys' email. So. Oh, okay. So I will put my email in the chat box. Trin, if you could do the same, that would be helpful. I believe I have trends, so just even if you just want to send it to me now, I can probably forward along. Okay, okay, great. Thank you. All right, thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.